Thank you, Peter. Good afternoon, and thank you all for being here. I'm Abby from China General Chamber of Commerce. And today on behalf of CGCC, I'm very glad to present you the update findings of our 2022 annual business survey. So um, let me, next slide please. Today, I, uh, there are several topics that I would like to cover and walk you through. So you will have a, a brief understanding of the project itself and of some of our key trends identified in the survey report. As one of the most um, comprehensive research projects focusing on the existing Chinese business in the US, uh, our survey helps to timely update business developments and reflect the issues they've encountered in the previous years. Meanwhile, our report also helps the US better understand how Chinese uh, business uh, operate in the US and positive impacts on and contributions, contributions to the US economy and the local communities. As you can see, we've been conducting this annual research since the year of 2014, and we're very proud to bring you the uh, key findings from our ninth consecutive report. So first, our respondents. This year, as Johnson has mentioned, we uh, gathered firsthand data from 111 Chinese companies. Our respondents' U.S. operations are established in 42 states across the U.S. and the, their subsidiary offices and other facilities also uh, span a great range of the entire country. The top five states that host our survey, uh, survey companies are California, New York, Texas, New Jersey, and Illinois. But overall, our company's U.S. operations span a broad range of sectors according to the global industry classification standard. It's industrials, uh, customer, questionaries, financials, and the real estate top the list. Another two helpful indicators uh, are the ownership structure of the parent companies and the corporate structure through which they establish the U.S. operations. As shown here, nearly half of the respondents are private companies and about 19% of the companies are government owned. And most of the companies, which is 63% uh, enter the US market through Greenfield, Greenfield investment. If I may summarize this, uh, uh, this year's event, uh, survey results, in one sentence, I would say that it outlined a mixed picture of slightly recovered performances supported by companies' resilience and their commitment to the uh, business growth of their uh, as primary objectives and the mounting pressures and the challenges due to a complex changing and increasingly contested environment in 2021. So next, please. So, the slight recovery was first reflected in revenue and profitability. As you can see, 54% of the respondent companies reported an increase in revenue last year. It bounced back actually to the pre-pandemic level and even close to the results from 27 and 28, 2018, 20, 2017 and 2018. And aligned with the revenue, surveyed companies seem to have managed profitability moderately better than last year. The chart on the right documented the year-on-year -year change of their EBIT margin, and it was slightly re restored to the 2020 level. Thanks, please. From the new investment perspective, it's worth noticing that 24% of our respondents made new investments in the U.S. last year. That number doubled our results from, uh, from, last year, from last year's results. The percentage of companies that decreased the new investment shrank almost half from 39% to only 20% in 2021. While the majority of new investments was made in IT, energy, and financial sectors. So 
uh, that also the result also aligned with the trend that Chinese companies are tend to make investments in digital transform transformation during the pandemic years. You can also find the um, details in the report. And uh, according to the, our data and interviews with business executives that indicate that a company's US operations to the US market um, commit, stay committed to the US market over the long term. Next, please. In fact, we observed a, a bouncing back in terms of assessment of the, of the US investment in a business environment as shown in those data hearts, like 29% of respondents claimed a moderate or substantial improvement in the local business climate. That number was only 6% in our previous results. The percentage of moderate or substantial deterioration has also dropped significantly as shown here. Well, the other part of the mixed picture we mentioned comes from the uncertainties and increasing challenges due to the complicated, complicated circumstances throughout 2021. As US-China relations remain still made in many dimensions um, and the global economy entered the third year of the pandemic, the survey responses highlight a slightly wavering trend regarding parent companies' commitment to the US market. Last year, only 74% of our respondents reported that they had reinvested the majority of their US profits in the local business. And that number was 90% last year and 80% from our 2020 survey. Similarly, when looking at uh, when looking at the US operations revenue contributions to the parent companies, we found that 71% of respondents can counted less than 10% of their company's global revenue. And that percentage was actually the highest since the year of 2018. Next, please. And companies' pressures come inevitably from the complicated state of the US-China relations. The uncertainties on both governmental and economic levels posed great challenges to the business and triggered overwhelming concerns by the, by the vast majority of the respondents and their expectations um, for the relationship in the near future are not getting better. Nearly half, there was 49% of surveyed companies forecast the worst US-China relation, bilateral relations in the last year. And only 10% of them expected improvements, which was about one fourth of, our, of that number in 2021 survey results. And similar situations here for the trade and economic relations outlook. Thanks. Another uh, additional challenges for Chinese companies are shown here. So business are confronting the bitter reality of uh, record inflation rate, which lead to the overall rise of business, co business costs. As the challenge has obviously well persisted into this year, we will definitely um, focus on it and delve into the details of its impacts in our business survey next year. Well, although the impact of COVID-19 and its aftermath have shrank to some, to some extent, it remains to be one of the major challenges in, in 20, 2021. And uh, as you can see, over one third of the respondents stated that the difficulty in recruiting and maintaining talents in the US is now a major challenge for business operations. Interviewed uh, executives also reflected that most Chinese companies in the US expected that their current struggle in attracting and maintaining talents will um, continue in this year or even linger for a longer time to, to the year ahead. Next, please. Well, looking at the mixed picture of Chinese business in the US, it's not difficult to um, identify the cautious optimism. Um, 
previous slides, please. the cautious optimism from our respondents. So looking ahead, there's a slight larger number of companies uh, compared to the year, the year before expect higher um, revenue over the next two years in terms of uh, future investments. 27% of them are investing uh, more in the coming year, while the number was only 12% in, in our previous survey. The next, please. Um, sorry, previous. They go in the companies. Okay, thank you. So as mentioned earlier, uh, our Chinese companies' compliance with U.S. laws and regulations has began to catch the attention of managers and policymakers uh, in both countries. Uh, also, a few high-profile functions of China-oriented multinational companies uh, in U.S. by U.S. authorities demonstrate the enormous challenges Chinese investors face in compliance and the dire consequences of U.S. investigation and prosecution for non-compliance. So in 2022, um, we, uh, 2022 business survey, we took a closer look at the legal and the compliance aspect of the Chinese business operation in the US. So when being asked, previous please, when being asked about the challenges, so and surprisingly complex and ambiguous US laws and regulations top the list. So as noted, expanding regulations has been a key driving force of the U.S. corporate compliance movement since the early 1990s. Um, in a vague standards, of, instead of clear-cut rules, permit the regulations. So therefore, even sizable U.S. companies with very uh, highly sophisticated compliance staff cannot guarantee full compliance, so much less Chinese investors that entered the US market a, a decade ago and is still testing the market. Moreover, about half of the survey respondents consider potential conflicts between US and Chinese laws and regulations to be a major challenge. So in that past few years, the deteriorating relations of the two countries and the rapid shifting geopolitical orders have led to more conflicts in the regulations between the two countries as both are adopting expanding sanctions and corresponding blocking regulations. So these, these two are the major challenges confronted in compliance by our Chinese companies and others include lack of awareness about the cost of non-compliance, lack of communication with the US regulators and difficult to control the risks relating to a third party. And here I'm outlining the, um, um, the contents of the featured section in our report, legal and compliance. And we encourage you to delve into the details, read through the report for more uh, for more contents and details in this part. The other featured topics over to this year's report is brand and trust. So in the past a few years, Chinese companies also experiencing elevated challenges in entering and su being successful in the US market. So when being asked uh, about the current brand presence in the US market, 29% of them 29% um, of the correspondents feel that they have a weak presence. Either it's extremely or moderately weak. And 31% 31, 31 feel neutral about that. And only 7% of the respondents feel they have a very strong express, uh, presence in the US market. Well, U.S. is needless to see uh, to see the an important piece um, in in companies' global strategy, um, with access to the matured financing resources and global talents, services, and intellectual properties. So our re our research results actually show that the hesitation of companies uh, in establishing or maintaining their brand presence. Um, a strong U.S. presence is only temporary. So when we look at the look at the charts, at the 
as the time horizon goes from current to short term and then to long term, people will pick will tick up the importance of the corporate branding to their business strategy as their US business strategy along the spectrum. So clearly there are a lot of details to delve in and there's much space for improvement. Uh, similarly, I will um, outline the next please, uh, outline the contents of a brand and trust feature section in our report in a week. Please take your time and uh, read through the report to more details that we provide. So as US and Chinese businesses still hold deep commercial interests in each other's market, our CGCC will remain committed to not only carrying out more constructive engagements and encouraging positive conversations, but also building bridges and achieving greater synergies to encourage a better understanding and a cooperation between the world's two largest economies. So thank you all for, uh, for your time and attention. The English version of, of our survey report can be accessed on our CGCC website. And we look forward very much to your comments and feedback. Thank you. Thank you.